And I had a figure four of restaurants on the Gregorio M. Lugan. <coughs> The uh, four warrants, Your Honor, is 2016 A32205001195 is a warrant for murder. Uh, 120 is a warrant for attempted murder. 121 is a warrant for possession of a weapon during a violent crime. And 122 is discharging a firearm into an occupied vehicle. Uh, as well as those, the Sunday's been served with those warrants, and we have to be here for a bond here today, Your Honor. All right, and uh, Mr. Harpoon and Mr. Bland, y'all represent Mr. Leon? We do, Your Honor, Your Honor. And Mr. Leon is present? Yes, sir, he is. And you're ready to proceed? We are, Your Honor. All right, uh, Smith, if you would uh, please uh, tell me the uh, allegations. <coughs> Your Honor, uh, Lieutenant Bledsoe of the Western Police Department. He'll provide you with uh, some of the facts. All right. Uh, Lieutenant? Yes, sir. Your Honor, on um, February 14th, around 8.37 p.m., officers of the Lexington Police Department were dispatched to a possible uh, shooting victim located at 110 River Chase Way. That is a parking ride uh, right off of the 378 Sunset Boulevard right here at I-20 within the town of Lexington. And this was based on a 911 call uh, from a male who stated several times during the call, I shot my wife and her lover. Uh, the caller identifies himself only as Greg uh, prior to disconnecting. So the 911 call uh, was made from a cellular phone uh, that belonged to the defendant, Gregorio uh, Leon. Uh, the third arrival officer signed a deceased male lying on the ground between two vehicles. Uh, he had several apparent gunshot wounds to his torso and body. Uh, a female later identified as a second, second vehicle, uh, Maria Raquel Leon, along with her son, Gregorio Leon. Fourth, were found on the scene as well. Uh, it's been determined uh, that Mr. Leon has access to uh, numerous weapons through many purchases of his own and his son through the years. Uh, many of those um, weapons have been identified as revolvers. Uh, the, the weapon used in, the, in this crime has not been recovered and as of today, uh, on the night of the uh, murder, uh, Mr. Leon was at a San Jose restaurant located at 4710 Augusta Road. Uh, he's seen immediately exiting the store and leaving his, uh, his vehicle approximately 8 to 10 minutes prior to the, to the murder. Uh, he, Mr. Leon turned himself in to agents of uh, Lexington Police Department accompanied by his attorney, Eric Bland, at approximately 11.30 on the night of, uh, set, of uh, February 14th. Uh, he was uh, driving a Range Rover and wearing all black coat and clothing uh, we turned himself in and that uh, matches what was up there on the surveillance video that night of the crime. Uh, I understand Mr. Leon was on federal probation at the time uh, this incident occurred uh, and he's currently uh, being held additionally on a detainer uh, for such. Uh, we also have received information after the arrest uh, from several sources that uh, Mr. Leon has long sent money uh, back to his hometown in Mexico and uh, he maintains a residence there as well. All right. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Lieutenant Dustler. Yeah, he also, on the federal charge, I think it was a year probation. Uh, they had to pay on him for that. He also had um, a charge in state court uh, last year on a bribe-related charge. He was still on probation with um, a fine being imposed that has been paid if the probation was terminated in January of this year. Now, the uh, solicitor, do you know, uh, or Lieutenant Bledsoe, as far as the terms of the federal probation, can he or can he not possess a weapon? Or do you know? So I understand that he could not possess a weapon based on the conditions of the federal probation. All right, and uh, as far as the state's position uh, on the bond, do you have any position as to that? Let's start with that. It's about crime, you uh, You have uh, one deceased, another one potentially could have been deceased. That's on the attempted murder charge. And uh, we'll leave it up to your discussion. 
Thank you. Uh, thank you. Is there anything further for the staff? No, sir. Thank you, uh, Mr. Harpooni. If it pleases the court, Chairman, let me address one issue first. Uh, the arrest warrant for violating the probation that was issued by the federal court, the only, only uh, 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 element or only allegation is that he got arrested. Um, and the reason for that is Mr. Leon uh, has taken the position that his probation officer, because it was a misdemeanor he pled to, um, that he could possess a weapon, that she visited his home. He has a concealed weapons permit, um, which he, uh, uh, he transports money to and from his restaurants. And his understanding was he could carry a pistol. But that uh, uh, is an issue we'll, I guess we'll wrestle with when we get to federal court. Um, but I want to make it clear that, that he felt he had a right to carry a pistol. He'd been carrying a pistol, and he had told his probation officer that he was carrying a pistol. That's right. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> now, Your Honor, there's a couple of issues here that you, you need, we need to address. One is the danger to the community, and two, um, his uh, propensity to flee. Uh, I would point out that he surrendered himself. Uh, I called uh, the Lexington County Sheriff's Department as soon as I heard from Mr. Bland and made arrangements for Mr. Bland to bring him to the city of Lexington and surrender himself, which he did without any problem whatsoever. Um, he could have fled at that point. Uh, Mr. Bland will address uh, the residents in Mexico and sending money back to Mexico, and I think we'll be interested to hear why he does that. Um, in, in terms of the danger to the community, one of the victims in this case, alleged victims, uh, is his wife, Rachel, uh, who's here in the courtroom today. Uh, and Your Honor, she uh, will address this court. I'm going to ask her some questions in just a moment. She does not speak English very well. She is not a naturalized citizen. Mr. Leon is a naturalized citizen. She has a green card, which is a permanent uh, resident visa in effect. She has, the, uh, uh, she has the right to apply for citizenship, but has not done so. She's been here about 20 years, does not speak English well. She is the, the woman mentioned in the incident report and the woman mentioned as the victim of the uh, alleged uh, attempted murder. Could I have her address the court at this time? Yes, sir. I'll, I'll be happy to hear from anyone you want me to hear from, Mr. Harper. Okay. You want them back here, Your Honor? If you'd have her uh, come around to the microphone, okay. please. Great. Thank you. <coughs> and this, should, this is Mr. Leon's sister, Susan, right up here, um, who is going to translate. Oh, right, no, right, right there. The microphone. And uh, as far as the uh, translator, would you tell me your uh, full name, please? My name is Susanna Ortega. And uh, what is your relationship? Um, she's my sister in law, Greg is my brother. And, and, and Your Honor, we have a detective here who speaks Spanish, so I want to make sure that uh, there's no question that uh, the questions are translated correctly and the answers are translated correctly. So we'll back up. All right. his, his name is Officer. State your name, Officer, please. Detective Mark Miramontes. All right, and uh, you, uh, you bilingual, you speak uh, yes. Spanish and English? Yes. Spanish your first language? Yes. First language, English is your second? Yes. Thank you, uh, thank you very much, thank you. <coughs> and, and Your Honor, we're doing it, we do not have time to obtain a professional translator, but uh, for this purpose, I believe this will be okay. All right, thank you, sir. Okay, um, would you state your full name for the judge, please? <laughs> Maria Rachel Leon. Maria Rachel Leon. Thank you. Okay, and are you the wife of Greg Leon? Eres la esposa de Gregorio Leon? Yes. How long have you been married? ¿Cuántos años estás casado? Twenty-five. Twenty-six. Twenty-five. 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 Twenty-five.
habría probabilidad que puedan cerrar. O, o problemas porque no esté ahí. Problems. Right. Now, you understand that you are a, a alleged, you are na named as a victim of an attempted murder. And without going into the facts of what may have happened last Sunday, do you want this judge to allow Mr. Leon to come out on bond with conditions so that he can continue to operate the restaurants, support the family? Deje salir a Goyu confianza. I, I just said the, um, about him getting out, that she won't handle him out on bond. bond. What else? With conditions. Con condiciones. The, the conditions being that uh, he not have contact with you. Condiciones como que no tenga contacto contigo. So that he lives somewhere else. Que vive en otro lugar. And if the court saw fit to put some sort of monitor on him. Y si la corte quiere que le ponga cualquier cosa so para his, cuidarlo. So that his uh, movements will be limited to go to work. Se ha invitado para ir a trabajar y de ir a la iglesia y que los niños vayan a verlo a él. ¿Quieres que el juez hiciera eso? Sí. ¿Estás miedo de que si el juez lo deja ir, que si el juez lo deja ir, que si el juez lo deja ir, que Mr. Leon te harme o te hurt? ¿Tienes miedo que si lo dejan salir bajo fianza, que Goli te haga daño o que te haga algo? ¿Tienes tu miedo? No, no, no. No creo que él sea capaz de hacerlo. Pero por favor, indulgen. Your Honor, she'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Sluster, do you have any questions? No, sir. Miss Leon, uh, are you afraid Señora, of your husband? Your husband? Yeah. No. One condition you wanted was uh, no contact. Una condición que tú querías era no contacto. Is that correct? Es correcto. What was yes. your response? Yes. Why do you want that as a condition of the bond? ¿Por qué tú quieres que sea una condición de la fianza si no le tienes miedo a él? I don't understand. Well, if you're not afraid of him, why do you si want no him to contact? Si no le tienes miedo, ¿por qué quieres que él no te no esté contigo, que no tenga contacto contigo? Your Honor, let me clarify. We suggested that to her as a way to, to provide some insulation. I'm not sure that she would not want contact. We, as Mr. Weon's attorneys, think that's a bad idea, um, at least for some period of time. I, I agree it is a bad idea. I'm just uh, trying to flesh out her mental state uh, of whether she is or is not afraid of Mr. Leon. No, I'm not afraid of him, but I think for some time I need this. I'm not afraid of him. Are you afraid if he gets out that he would hurt you? ¿Tienes miedo que si él salga te haga daño a ti? No, no, he's not capable of that. And let me make this clear: has anybody from his family, or me, or Mr. Bland, or anybody told you to say this here today, or intimidated you in any way? Alguien yo el otro abogado te intimidó, te hizo que dijeras esto que tú en contra de tu voluntad. Is this what you believe, and you want the judge to understand? Es lo que tú crees y quieres que el juez entienda. And of course, uh, Mr. Harpooli, and uh, I have the highest regard for you, Mr. Bland, and Mr. Lusty, and we never uh, <coughs> not applied that in any manner. No, 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 I just want to make sure that she is, and, and let me make clear that you're here with uh, uh, with Greg's sister. Is she a friend? Soy amiga. One of your good friends? Una amiga buena. Yes. Has she or anyone in the family put pressure on you to see this here today? ¿A ella o alguien de la familia presionado que ti para que digas eso hoy? No. Translation, correct? 
Yes, sir, pretty much of it. Uh, at the end of one of the conversations, Ms. Uh, Leon never said anything, but the translator put her own words into it, saying, I'm not afraid, which is something Ms. Leon never said at the end of that conversation. Oh, yes. I'm sorry, I just repeated the previous <coughs> sentence again. Oh, thank, you. thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for being here, Ms. <coughs> <coughs> So, Your Honor, the, uh, one of the victims um, who is alive is asking the court to release him on bail, uh, reasonable bail, so that he can continue to work, support the family, and keep these other folks in court. And Mr. Bland's going to address the financial implications if he doesn't get out on bail. And, of course, your decision here today will not, if you grant him bail, he will still not get out because we have to go to federal court and see if we can uh, get bail up there. So it's a, it's a two-step process, but we've got to get at least bail granted here before we go up there. Um, in terms of the danger to the community, uh, again, if the allegations uh, are to be believed, he shot uh, a person who was in the act of having a relationship with his wife. Not in any way a defense, but certainly would explain there's no, no one else that would be in danger from him. Uh, he's not a danger to the community. He's not a random act. Um, and secondly, you know, in terms of flight, I represented uh, Greg Leon in, in the charges involving uh, the prosecution of the sheriff and the um, illegal uh, aliens at his restaurant. Uh, he always you think that's immigrants, isn't it? illegal immigrants. Is that what you're talking about? A aliens? I misunderstood what you said. Go right ahead, Mr. Talk. They're not citizens. All right. Yes, sir. I'm not sure what the proper term is. Um, illegal immigrants. Um, and he always appeared for court, never, and he knew he had an opportunity to go to jail for that. Now, certainly not for the same, it's not, I'm not saying it's serious, but he always appeared fully cooperating with the federal authorities. Um, Jay Richardson from the U.S. Attorney's Office uh, told the court in a sentencing uh, on the, uh, the immigration issues uh, and how fully cooperative he was. Um, and, Your Honor, uh, this is not a guy that's going anywhere. This is not a guy that's going to hurt anybody else. And if he can have the opportunity to be out on bail and try to resolve some of these business issues, then if, in fact, he ends up having to go off to the penitentiary for this for federal probation revocation, um, all these folks will hopefully be in a position to remain employed. But right now, if he's not back out soon, those restaurants are going to be in trouble. So let me, uh, at this point, uh, defer to uh, Mr. Bland to talk to you about his family and his roots here and explain uh, what we heard about the money in Mexico. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Harper. And Mr. Bland? Hey, please, of course. Your Honor, I have had the uh, pleasure of representing uh, Mr. Leone, his restaurants, and uh, his family since the late 1990s. Um, I have come to learn the story of the Leone family which is an extraordinary story. Mr. Gregory Leon, who's sitting in the second row, is the patriarch and father of his family. And he came and brought his family in the late 70s from San Jose de la Paz in Mexico. And he opened, at that time, a pioneer of, of Mexican restaurants, started out in Atlanta. And then they came to South Carolina. And this family uh, has opened San Jose restaurants throughout the Midlands area, uh, in, in Hilton Head as well. And they are an extremely close-knit family. You, you've already met uh, Greg's wife, Rachel. You've already met his sister, Susie. His sister, Cecilia, is there. Um, his brother, uh, Valentin, is here. Tony's in the back row, who I know very well. His brother, Eric, is, is there as well. Um, it's an extraordinary family. His, his children, I've watched them grow up. I've watched them literally be born uh, in the time. His oldest son is Pancho, who's a phenomenal kid. He goes to college. His second son is Greg uh, the fourth. He also goes to college. They all work and go to school. Uh, Adrian, who's on the end, was a phenomenal kicker for Lexington High School. <coughs> Jessica, his daughter, is absolutely brilliant, a straight A student at River Club. His uh, younger, her younger son, uh, brother, Alex, is a phenomenal kid. He um, raises dogs, helps at the farm, and then Valentin is the apple of everybody's eye. Um, ex I mean, excuse me, um, 
Barack. Barack, excuse me, is the apple of everybody's eye. Um, Mr. Leone employs over 130 people, Your Honor, the, with families in the San Jose restaurants. Uh, his restaurants are in Orangeburg, Lexington, Richland County, and in Newburgh. Uh, the people that are here to stand up for Mr. Leone are, are solid people. Uh, there's Eric Howard, who's the president of uh, regional sales for U.S. Foods. U.S. Foods is a major supplier for these restaurants. Every one of the brothers that I named and every one of the sisters that I named also own San Jose restaurants. It will be affected if Mr. Leone cannot get out and tend to these restaurants so that we can get them stable, so that we can deal with the bankers that have already instituted litigation against Mr. Leone. There is um, uh, Ben Kelly, who is uh, one of the senior real estate uh, agents, commercial agents with NAIA Bank. He, he continues to help Mr. Leone with his real estate, the real estate that these restaurants are on. We also have Graham Zachary, who is the landscaper, who has a large landscaping company that does all landscaping for these restaurants. We also have Tim Dice, who does the POS system, which is all the cashiers and the computers, and linking the computers for his accountants. So the, 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 uh, the arms and the, the tentacles that, that spring from this San Jose restaurant um, are extraordinary. He is not a flight risk. I know that that is a major consideration because of uh, uh, his Mexican heritage and his Mexican roots. The money that they're referring to that he sends back to Mexico is Mr. Leon supports 10 to 20 families in San Jose de La Paz in the nearby towns, impoverished family, families. His parents go back and forth to Mexico and he provides them with money for their living. So he's not sending money back to park in Mexico. He actually provides for impoverished families. He does that in Lexington for poor families. He's a serious member of the Catholic Church. If you go to any of the ball fields, uh, the, the Dixie Youth ball fields, the Little League ball fields, the high school ball fields, you will see the San Jose banners. These brothers and Greg and the father support this community. He could have been a flight risk. He had felony charges against him in connection with the Sheriff Metz and in connection with the uh, employment of illegal uh, immigrants. He didn't flee. He stood. He, he faced his charges. There was no question Sunday night that he was coming in once there was a bolo put out for him after Mr. Harpootley and talked to the police. I was in constant coordination with Lieutenant Bledsoe. We talked probably six or seven times. I had to catch up with Mr. Leon. I had to assure him uh, that the justice system uh, would be fair to him, and he understood that. And we drove back in. They're, they didn't send out a uh, police to find us. Uh, he walked in, he, he put his hands on his head, and he went in and he accepted the charges that were against him. Uh, we contend to, uh, that these charges are not correct, that he, he did not commit murder. I know that's the allegation. It's a very serious crime, a very serious crime. Um, but he loves his wife. There's no question about it. The love is here in this courtroom. And would, would he ever do this again? I can never imagine any set of circumstances where he would ever do this again. Yes, he has a concealed weapons permit because he carries large amounts of money from the restaurant to deposit in the bank. Absolutely, if you're on a grants bail, we, that would absolutely never again. Right now, there's no guns in his house. Because of uh, we, we had, he had to get them when he rid of them when he was on the charges against him federally, uh, he will be living with his parents. Uh, Mr. Harpootlian was correct; he would agree to any kind of restraints that will provide him with the ability to work. He just wants to see his family. He wants to make sure these restaurants are stable. I need his help in dealing and in negotiating with the banks, uh, MDSC. I mean, excuse me, bb and has over $4 million of, uh, of loans out to Mr. Leone, personally, that we have to deal with. And, and I, I need his assistance. His family needs his assistance. The community needs his assistance. Uh, total apologies to the victim and, and, and the family. I'm not denigrating the loss of that life, but there, 
there are some unusual circumstances um, that have presented itself. Um, I don't know if Mr. Harputlian wants to do to get into that right now, other than they, we do have a Facebook page uh, where the decedent listed that he was an FBI officer and part of the Foreign Secret uh, State Department. We, 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 we will have to investigate that. I'm not, I'm not saying that that, that uh, is an excuse for what happened, but please understand this was Valentine's Day night. He had just taken his wife to dinner and his children to dinner, and he was going back to his work. It's not an excuse. It's not a justification. Um, I have known Mr. Leone. I don't stand up in court to vouch for people, for clients, and say that I can assure you that it wouldn't happen again often. I don't think it could ever happen again with this man. And I, he's given me his word that he would never flee on these charges, that he wants to address them and have them disposed of appropriately in a court of law. Your Honor, thank um, you. Uh, I want to ask uh, everybody that's here uh, to support Greg uh, being granted bail and believe he will remain in the community and need him out on bail. Stand, please. This is family, business people. Thank you. Uh, Your Honor, again, I would reiterate that no matter your decision today, uh, we will be going to federal court next week for a bond here and there, um, and he's facing revocation of his uh, probation there, his bond of uh, probation revocation issue, and we'll be re revisiting all these issues again with another judge. That doesn't in any way diminish your responsibility here today, but I will uh, say uh, that in terms of federal charges, that will be dealt with by uh, the federal can we answer any questions the court might have? If I grant him bail, and part of that bail is uh, he can uh, maintain his employment, can give me some details about uh, what I was we're talking about, uh, more specifics about what that involves. Uh, his restaurant's open at 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, he's usually there to uh, accept deliveries. He usually works at the Highway 1 or the Highway 6 restaurant. And then during the day, he spot checks restaurants by going in, and then he closes the Highway 1 restaurant, I think, at 9.30 at night. So it would be probably from a, a 10 o'clock in the morning till 9.30 at night. And, and Your Honor, we'd be more than happy to, um, to, to submit to uh, either the Swister's office or to whoever would be supervising any sort of if you give them an ankle bracelet or whatever, a specific itinerary um, uh, on a weekly basis or daily basis. We understand that uh, if he makes bail, um, that you, you're going to want him uh, very closely uh, shepherded around. So we'll, we'll, we'll accommodate, and we can, we can, with a little bit of effort, we can accommodate and make that even a narrower. He may not be able to travel around to all the restaurants, but he does need to be at those two restaurants to get them open in the morning. And, and perhaps close them at night. Um, and, and he's got a, a son and a couple of other brothers that work in this. And, and given one of, the, one of the reasons why I'm out is to make see if we can't make a transition to a different set of folks having to do some of these things. It's just, he never anticipated he would not be in a position to do them. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hoffman. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, so is there any victim impact? <coughs> We have some uh, relatives who are deceased who they do not wish to speak to the court this time. Any victim impact from uh, Ms. Leon? No, sir. Anything in response to uh, Mr. Harpoon or Mr. Bland's lesson? No, sir. The only thing that we have is a concern about the relationship with Mexico and things of that nature. And Your Honor, of course, will surrender, obviously surrender a passport um, before he be granted bail. Um, he does have, he is a Mexican heritage, but could have, could have easily, if he wanted to go to Mexico, gone the other night. Yes. And Your Honor, his children are here. I think they'll, he, all his children are here. His whole family's here. Um, and he has never, ever not showed up for a court appearance in my three years of representing
like uh, looking at the uh, matter that I'm required to look at uh, in setting uh, conditions of bond. I review 17-15-30 uh, of the uh, South Carolina Code, and it directs the court to consider, based on available information, the nature and circumstances of the offenses charged, the accused family ties, employment, financial resources, character, and mental condition, the length of his residence in the community, his record of convictions, and his record of flight to avoid prosecution or failure to appear at other court proceedings. I also review as directed by our South Carolina Constitution <laughs> Section 15 of the South Carolina Constitution, and I also review the Eighth Amendment of the United States Constitution. That amendment reads, excessive bail shall not be required, nor excessive fines imposed, nor cruel or unusual punishment inflicted. As to the South Carolina Constitution, it indicates that all persons shall be before conviction bailable by sufficient sureties. But bail may be denied to persons charged with capital offenses or offenses punishable by life imprisonment or with violent offenses defined by the General Assembly, referring, of course, to 16-1-60, giving due weight to the evidence and to the nature and circumstances of the event. Excessive bail shall not be required, nor shall excessive fines be imposed, nor shall cruel nor corporal nor unusual punishment be inflicted, nor shall witnesses be unreasonably detained. I further review the status of the case law on bail and bond in South Carolina, reviewing State versus Hill, 444 Southeast 2nd, 255, in which bail was granted to uh, capital defendants. Uh, this not being no indication to the court as being a, uh, a capital case.
in reviewing in reviewing those factors, uh, it appears that uh, Mr. Leon has uh, deep and wide support and roots in the uh, Midlands uh, community, as evidenced by. I certainly haven't counted. Uh, perhaps uh, 75 uh, individuals, uh, give or take, I'm not sure, that are here in his support today. Uh, further, uh, his employment appears that he has been uh, stable uh, for many years, uh, being involved in the uh, family business, and uh, he certainly has uh, financial resources uh, given the uh, the number of his uh, immediate family members and further the fact is indicated to me that he helped support uh, individuals uh, from his ancestral home in Mexico and other uh, individual families uh, in the Midlands area. I take into account his length of record. I take into account and note uh, his uh, record of convictions uh, that he is on federal probation uh, at this time Further, that he had a federal probation wherein he paid a, a fine, and that probation has ended, as I understand it. And I further take into account that he has a, no history of violence, uh, no record of convictions otherwise. Danger uh, to the community is a uh, the first significant issue a judge should review, when I look at his record, a lack of uh, prior uh, crimes of violence, I do not see him as a uh, unreasonable risk of danger to the community. Uh, in cases with allegations such as this, I consider, of course, his uh, danger to a specific potential targeted victim. He is charged not only with murder, which is a violent offense, but attempted murder, in which uh, Maria Leon is the alleged victim. Uh, she has addressed the court and indicates uh, to the court that she is uh, through interpreter that she is uh, not afraid of Mr. Leon, that uh, she is, I paraphrase, not opposed to uh, him receiving a bond under certain specific conditions. That being uh, her opinion, I, uh, I will accept that as her word and her opinion being given to the court freely, voluntary, and intelligently without any undue influence perpetrated on her in, uh, in any way. Flight risk, of course, uh, is always a concern, and I think uh, he is a uh, there is a potential for flight risk. It's kind of a balancing, however, here. Both the serious nature of the offense, he could get life without parole for the murder, 30 years for the attempted armed robbery, excuse me, 30 years for the attempted murder, uh, five years for possession of a weapon, during the commission of a violent crime, and quite frankly, I'm not sure the uh, the punishment as far as uh, discharging a firearm into an occupied uh, vehicle. The most significant of which is that he's facing a life without parole. As Mr. Harpootlian uh, pointed out, he had felony charges uh, for the federal court. He did not flee. 
he had these he allegedly committed the acts contacted an attorney turned himself in I balanced that against the uh, serious uh, nature of the charges that have been uh, have been presented so he does not have any record of flight I take into account that he does have a uh, uh, residence in Mexico and contacts uh, I'm assuming not not only in Mexico but in other other places outside of uh, South Carolina conditions of the meeting of the bond that I'm going to set is he shall uh, surrender his passport he shall not be in possession of any deadly weapon, firearm, or otherwise. And of course, I realize a knife is a deadly weapon. And he works in a restaurant, and I don't know that he, if, if that's what he does in a restaurant or not, but uh, otherwise, outside of his employment, he shall not have possession of any type of deadly weapon uh, as defined by statutes. That includes a firearm, ammunition, otherwise. He shall uh, reside uh, at his parents' uh, residence address to uh, be provided in the uh, order of bond. He shall provide uh, weekly schedules in advance uh, to the uh, solicitor's office concerning his uh, employment. He have a curfew from 9 a.m. He'll be under curfew from, I think of that, 10 p.m. until 9 a.m. 10 p.m. until 9 a.m. Otherwise, uh, during the uh, hours from 9 a.m. to uh, 10 p.m., he may work, may go to church, he may uh, attend any uh, medical appointments, he, of course, uh, may attend any legal appointments or, of course, uh, court appearances as required. He shall, uh, he shall be placed on the electronic monitoring and should he be able to make bond, he shall not be released from the Lexington County Detention Center until that electronic monitoring uh, is in place. All right, I'm sending bond in the amount of uh, $500,000 surety. Any additional uh, factors you would like for me to address or conditions you would like for me to consider, sir? Of course, he has no contact with the victim whatsoever. No contact with the victim whatsoever. Anything additional, sir? What about the credit amount for the city? That's the stand, all of the standard conditions of the bond. He shall not uh, travel out of the state of South Carolina. Right. He won't travel anywhere with the GPS on without permission from the solicitor's office. He won't travel. I mean, the only way he can do that would be permission and order signed by the court. <coughs> Any variation from those conditions um, would not would require consent by the solicitor and a motion or a motion before the court. Yeah, I might have not been tracking correctly, but I think he has. Uh, 
The family had restaurants in uh, Midlands. I tell you, soon that included Lexington and Richmond County, Newberry, and Hilton Head. No, Orangeburg. Oh, uh, Orangeburg. Yeah. Uh, so he has uh, Richmond, Lexington, Orangeburg, and Newberry. Yes, Your Honor. I'll limit him to the four counties. Thank you. All right. Uh, um, shall I travel out of uh, Lexington, Richmond, uh, Orangeburg, and Newberry unless it's approved by the court? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, Your Honor, two, two points. One, he is currently housed at the Richland County Detention Center. Oh, right. so I, I didn't was, know that. Well, they moved uh, o- over there. And of course, right. he is and got a federal detainer, so we'll have to some hoops to jump through before we ever get to, to, to deal with the electronic monitoring. Secondly, um, <coughs> to conserve financial resources, could he post 10% of that surety bond um, instead of having to pay a bondsman to do that? No, sir, he can't. He's got to pay a bondsman. Okay. All right. Your, your Honor. Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Leon, what you didn't address, and I, I don't want to... I'm sorry, I can't quite hear you, Mr. Bland. What, what Your Honor didn't address is um, he wants to see his... Would he be able to see his children, um, and how would we be able to do to do that? Because if some of his children I, are young. I never... Uh, I was never provided information as to the ages of his children. If they are adults, I take it they can come see him. I mean, uh, no, no, no child has addressed me to say I want to or I don't want to. Well, Your Honor, I think they all want to see him. And for right now, they can come visit his parents. We need to change that. Okay. We'll address the court later on if it becomes. Yeah. I just don't want him to run a foul, Your Honor. I, I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think visitation is before me. Uh, for purposes of setting bonds. Solicitor, do you have a, a different opinion on that? No, sir. But, but his children coming to see him at his parents' house would not in any way violate the conditions of their own volition. I, I do not uh, think it does. Again, I don't, I don't know their ages. And, uh, All right, Your Honor. Um, anything we need to address beyond that, Your Honor? Prepare the order, uh, email it to uh, the solicitor, email it to me. Yes, sir. And uh, I, I'll review it, and if all the terms and conditions that I've addressed is not in it, I'll amend it. Okay, and, Your Honor, um, the uh, electronic monitoring, is that done through the solicitor's office here? I'll talk to Don if you figure that out. I, I think that's done through uh, private, uh, yes. private companies. Okay. Uh, all right, so he's in the custody of the Richmond County. Alvin has been detention center? Yes, sir. Yes. He's in custody of the Alvin S. Glenn detention center. So we'll find out. We're not going to have a federal bond here probably until next week, next week, so we've got time to look at that. All right. Uh, anything further, Mr. Bland, Mr. Hartley? No, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you for hearing No, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Court meeting and uh, recess. Is there anything else you have for me today? No, sir.